You're listening to Jazz After Nine. My name's Neil Colligan. And on the show tonight, uh, we're talking about uh, Sweet Messiah, present a presentation of the Winnipeg Jazz Orchestra that's coming up at the Winnipeg Art Gallery this Sunday night. Two performances uh, featuring not only the WJO, but also Aaron Prop, who's a, a regular feature here on Jazz After Nine. And I'm very glad to welcome in studio Aaron Prop and Richard Gillis, the artistic director of the WJO. Good evening. Hi, Neil. Glad to be here. Okay. Well, okay, we're going to start off with the obvious. The elephant in the room, if you wanted that. You guys are a jazz organization. Here you are taking on one of the monumental works of classical music. Right. We um, drew the inspiration for this uh, from Ellington Suites in the Nutcracker, which we've done a few times, and uh, some of his other suites as well. And many jazz writers have, have tackled classical literature. Um, and so for us, we were looking for writing projects. In 2008, we decided we would do some of the movements from Handel's Messiah. So we did a three-movement suite uh, and performed it in 2008. We always thought, you know, down the road, maybe we'll, we'll flesh it out and maybe do several more movements, and we may still do that. But um, when the opportunity came up to do a recording, we thought we would build a holiday-themed um, uh, CD around this instrumental suite of th three, three pieces. And uh, so that's where, where its genesis came from. Well, naturally enough, we're talking about just a segment of uh, Messiah here. So naturally, there's some other music that uh, makes an appearance here. Aaron, that's where you come into, yeah. uh, you know, voice, as it were. Uh, tell us about some of the stuff you are going to be presenting on stage. Sure. Uh, well, I had the privilege of singing for a few tracks on the WJO's Christmas record. And um, a couple of them are songs I've grown up singing uh, joy to the world caroling caroling and then a, one that was new to me that's really feels like you're singing a jazz standard ballad is there's a train out for dreamland um, and I enjoyed doing it I like working in the studio with Larry Roy who was mixing and um, and having an instrument like an orchestra behind you is a whole new experience and just something uh, out of the ordinary for me so it was great yeah, and uh, mentioning Larry, of course, Larry, you've is your partner with uh, Courage, My Love, that yeah. fabulous album. Thank that, you. Uh, that was nominated or nominated for a Juno, yeah. won a Western Canada Music Award. Yes. And uh, you've been guests here before to talk about that as well as other things you've done. Larry has strong involvement on this recording that uh, the WJO is going to be presenting uh, available for sale at this event. Right, Larry did, did a great job recording. I've always I've used Larry for several recordings that I've done, and um, we're, we're still working on another one right now, just uh, he and I. But um, yeah, he does a great job. So when people come out to the show on Sunday, there's going to be an afternoon show and an evening show, and we've actually got tickets to give away for those, so that's coming up a little bit later. Um, I'm wondering, uh, so people are settling in and they're sh wondering, what am I here to expect? I mean, when we say Messiah, naturally enough, we're thinking very high and holy type of presentation. And yet when we think also of jazz, we sort of think of swinging and all that stuff like that. So how are, how's this thing going to flow for us? The, the Messiah suite in itself, you mean? Well, it's three movements. The first movement is And the Glory. Um, it's, it's a full chorus piece that's done early in the, in the oratorio. Uh, handles um, work. It's a it's a it's a nice piece of music. It's very famous if you're a uh, if you sing choir and you've probably done it. I I tried to take the form fairly close in terms of what the band does with it, uh, and of course except for the solo part, um, there's always some improvisation improvisation in it. Second movement, um, um, Jeff Preslav did the arrangement for uh, Sheep to Keep. And it's a, it's a, I think it's a tenor and alto duet that's later in the in the oratorio, and then the last movement uh, is the um, Hallelujah, Hallelujah chorus. So I've taken that and I've, again, I've tried to follow the form pretty much um, as written, and it goes in directions that I wouldn't necessarily. He does a lot of sequence sequences, and, and not necessarily in the direction that you would go if you were writing it yourself today. But um, in some, case, some cases, uh, what actually limited us from doing more of Handel's Messiah is that uh, Handel works, works with the small cells 
of music and, and in sequences it. And, and so it's not the way we would necessarily write today, you know, where we, where we think in terms of an A section and a B section that contrasts. And, and, um, so it was a little interesting to put together for the big band. But in the middle um, of the piece, what I do with Alleluia is, is it sort of tie it in with, uh, you know, kind of the Baptist um, celebratory kind of music that you would find in some kind Baptist of jump churches. out of your it seat kind of jumps, sing. It yeah. just seemed to make sense yeah. to, to include that. And so, um, yeah, it was, I guess that's what they can expect. It's, it's fun. It's not irreverent in any way, but it's fun. Okay. Well, that's, that's always a good thing to sell people on is fun. <laughs> uh, both of you have classical music backgrounds. I'm sure some of this at times must have been sort of like that little thing in your mind that goes, I'm not sure it should be done this way, but I'm going for it. Uh, yeah, I did grow up taking, you know, classical piano and voice um, for more years than I took jazz instruction. Um, and then, so, for example, I sang Joy to the World on uh, Richard's record, and uh, I always sang it in a hymn format. You know, I could sing all four parts if you'd like me to, uh, and to stray from the melody, which is something that I was never, ever taught to do in classical music, but then in my jazz training. Of course, interpretation and improvisation is uh, so important to that. So it's hard sometimes to take a piece that I've known my whole life and I learned as a classically trained student and feel any liberty because uh, you feel so... Uh, maybe out just it's very humbling actually to to choose to do that and you have to I feel I have to be so much more artistically careful about the choices that I make when I take a piece like that and um, and take any uh, liberties to change it yeah and naturally Richard like you were saying I mean you're you're taking a classical work that is so familiar to so many people and yet you have to provide that or you want to provide that space where people can be free and and throw something uh, improvisational into it well um, I, I mean I've come from a classical background very much right up through you know just before coming to the University of Manitoba all my formal training was classical but I I don't look on um, jazz is so much as being so much different. It's just, it's, it's how you approach it, just the way you would approach Handel very differently than you would approach Stravinsky, how you'd perform that, or how you'd perform, you know, any particular uh, piece. You have to understand what, what you can do with it. And, and there, is, there is improvisation in, in classical music, but it's more in terms of uh, intensity, uh, the use of intensity, the use of how you're phrasing and how you react with your accompanist and things. There's there's a different kind of improvisation that happens. Mm -hmm. Some people can uh, can do things exactly the same way, you know, all the time. Um, but there's it just it doesn't have the life that you know. When, when I studied with some great trumpet players, they were they were playing. They understood the piece well enough that they could do things with it in any particular performance. It was uh, sometimes different, very different. But um, so when I approach it, I, 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 when I approach the music, it wasn't so much that we were making it, uh, dumbing it down in any way. It was just taking it and just providing a, a different kind of a prism on it and, and changing the light a little bit and seeing what you could do and having some fun with it. And, I'm sure that a lot of the great composers, if they were living today, they'd be playing with different styles as well. They would be doing things differently, many of them. Um, so it, it's it's not meant to change it. It's not meant to um, be disrespectful in any way. It's just it's just having fun with it and uh, trying some things, trying things, being you know, imagine I guess using imagination and what you can do with it. Now, we've touched on the, uh, the new recording briefly. Uh, we talked about uh, Larry doing the produc uh, production for it and some of the stuff on there. This recording, from what I understand, is pretty much what people are going to hear and see on Sunday. Uh, I think so. <laughs> you could probably speak to that. Right, yeah. The, the, the concert on Sunday is the CD. We're just playing the music. Um, we will add three vocal songs um, that Aaron will sing so that we can 
just uh, extend the program a little bit and also extend um, Aaron's participation. She sings on the CD. There are 11, 11 different pieces. Three of those pieces are in the in the uh, Messiah Suite, and three of those eleven are, are vocal tunes. But on the concert, we're going to add, add another three. We're going to do a, a piece that we did a couple of years ago at a Christmas concert that Aaron sang, and then um, Aaron chose a couple of her favorite songs that she wants to sing. So. Okay. Well, this sounds like it's going to be a great little uh, sort of holiday stocking stuffer and also a great way to support the Winnipeg Jazz Orchestra. And I'd like to stress that especially because, naturally enough, it's very rare for any community in North America right now to have a regular concert uh, jazz orchestra to actually go and see and hear uh, on a regular basis. So uh, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you very much for being my guest. I'm going to take us out tonight on one of the recordings uh, that's going to be on that disc. Uh, can you set that up for me? Jeff Freslaff's arrangement of Caroling Caroling. Okay. And uh, is there anything in particular that people should listen for in this? In this one? Well, Aaron. Okay. Yeah. And Yeah, um, you seem very modest about that point there. <laughs> Uh, I I don't mean to. It was fun. It was great. I was glad to sing this song. So. Okay. Well, this is caroling from the Winnipeg Jazz Orchestra's newest uh, disc that's available for the holiday season. And, of course, don't forget uh, that the WJO and Aaron Prop are going to be on stage at the Winnipeg Al Art Gallery coming up this Sunday. You're listening to Jazz After Nine. <laughs> Christmas bells are ringing, caroling, caroling through the snow. Christmas bells are ringing, joyous voices, sweet and clear. Sing the sad part to cheer.